Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline the nation, we running the game. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there. Today we're talking about some quarterbacks that we're going to start and sit for fantasy football here in Week 15. The fantasy playoffs are upon us. And when it comes to the quarterback position, I need to be sure to reiterate something. This is not the position to get overly cute with, especially in the fantasy playoffs. There's plenty of solid, safe reliable high ceiling quarterbacks that we can choose from each and every week so if you have options maybe this isn't the time to take the big gamble who are some of those guys going to be this week we're going to get into every matchup here in week 15 but first how do we do in week 14 well, it wasn't the best week, but it wasn't the worst week either, all things considered. Out of the 26 quarterbacks, we gave a start or sit designation to. 18 of them were correct for an accuracy percentage of... Taylor, drop the graphic for a second. 69%. Nice. All right, throw it back up, Taylor. All right, some of our bigger misses. Big Ben came out there, looked pretty good. Joe Burrow says, F the pinky finger. I'm good to go. Justin Fields went out and had himself a day. The bigger hits, we had Taysom Hill. Jimmy G continues to be safe and reliable, especially with Debo and George Kittle in the mix. And then Russell Wilson starting to finally find his groove here once again, second half of the season. But now is the time where we dive into week 15. We got games all over the place, right? Let's kick it off Thursday night football. Kansas City Chiefs, Los Angeles Chargers. And you know what? Let's kick it off with a bang here. Let's make this one the Manscaped matchup of the week. Do not forget, as soon as this video is over, head over to manscaped.com. Get yourself something for the holidays. Guys, you can't procrastinate any longer. I know. I know the feeling. I like to procrastinate things too, but you ain't got no more time before Christmas. So head over there after this show is over. Use the promo code HEADLINERS. I'm going to give you 20% off and free shipping. It's not just ball trimmers. They got you covered with whatever you may need out there. But back to this matchup. You got quarterback three going up against quarterback five. And how crazy is it that Patrick Mahomes is still quarterback five on the season? I mean, this guy only has two passing touchdowns over his last three games combined. And if you dig a little bit deeper, he only has 10 touchdowns over his last seven games. That is not Mahomes-like whatsoever. And when you look at those 10 touchdowns, seven of those came in the two games against the Las Vegas Raiders. So thanks, Las Vegas, I guess, for that. These two actually faced off back in week three. The Kansas City Chiefs actually lost that game 24-30, to and Mahomes was quarterback seven overall on the week. But here's the deal. When you draft Patrick Mahomes, when you spend that high price on draft day, you know you're going to start this guy every single week, and it's really not that much of a question. You continue to roll him out and hope that he goes out there and puts up a big number. Same can really be said, though, for Justin Herbert. However, this dude, as of late, is on fire. He has three passing touchdowns now in three out of the last four games he's played. He should have Keenan Allen back. Does he have Austin Eckler in the mix? That's a big question mark we're following here throughout the week. But the deep ball is working right now, and the Kansas City Chiefs are allowing over 19 fantasy points per game, sixth most in the NFL. The defense has been playing a little bit better in Kansas City here as of late. They haven't allowed over 250 yards passing to a team since week seven. But this is Justin Herbert. He's feeling fantastic fancy and you can't ever sit this guy ever you just start justin herbert every single week but because we love football so much let's do some saturday football you got the las vegas raiders and cleveland browns and do the browns actually have baker mayfield this week that's a huge question mark because so many people in cleveland have tested positive for covid honestly at this point we don't know who all they're gonna have they need a ton of negative tests before saturday and it is not looking good so if we don't have baker mayfield Looks like we're going to have Case Keenum, who started back in week seven and beat the Denver Broncos. Now, sure, the Raiders are a much better matchup because they allow right around 19 fantasy points per game. But there is too much unknown. They could be without Kareem Hunt, Jarvis Landry, Austin Hooper, members of the offensive line. This is not one of those opportunities where you want to get too cute. Uh, usually we don't start Baker Mayfield when everybody's healthy. We're probably not going to start Case Keenum or Baker when half the team is missing. So they're all going to be sits. As for Derek Carr. This dude just fell off like a cliff, and I'm not talking like a rolling mountain. I mean, he went straight vertical. I don't know what happened to Derek Carr here as of late. He only has three touchdowns 
over the last month of the season. Only one game since week seven in which he's thrown for over 300 yards. Don't forget when this guy started the season, that was almost like a weekly occurrence. Now we know the Browns are missing members of their defense as well. And this could be a good chance for Derek Carr to go out and have a solid day, a huge day. Eh, probably not huge. He may be without Darren Waller here once again, but we could see a whole lot of Hunter Renfro. He's going to be a start for me here this week, but a little bit lower in the rankings just because we haven't seen the consistency here as of late. On the doubleheader now for Saturday, New England Patriots, Indianapolis Colts, and we got a battle between two quarterbacks coming off their bye week. They should be fresh. They should be healthy. They should be ready to go. And this matchup could kind of have a playoff style feel to it. Two run-heavy teams, but we know New England is super tough against quarterbacks. They haven't allowed over 200 yards passing to an opposing quarterback since week eight. Now, Wentz, he's only had one game over the last month in which he had at least 200 yards and two touchdowns. Now, New England has activated playoff push mode, right? Tons of running, and they want to control the time of possession. They really want to eat up the clock. Honestly, in this game, I'm not overly confident in Carson Wentz. Could be a little bit too much for him to chew off. We know that Jonathan Taylor is going to get a large chunk of volume here in this offense, and we may not see that touchdown upside from Carson Wentz, so he's going to be a sit. As for Mac Money Jones, this is a much better matchup for him. Indianapolis allows right around 18 fantasy points per game, and once you take out that snowstorm that they had before the bye week where he had, like, what, three pass attempts? Mac Jones has been playing pretty good football, scoring at least 18 fantasy points in two of the last three games before snowpocalypse. Now, New England, they're winners of seven straight. They're coming off their bye week, and if I had to bet, there's a good game plan there by Bill Belichick and Mac Jones to go out there and have another solid day. He's never going to be one of those quarterbacks that goes out and throws for 400 yards and four touchdowns. Could he go out there and get you 200 yards and two touchdowns? Potentially. Safe floor, going to be a start. Which means it's time for some Sunday football where we're going to hit thrust it over. It was a slow thrust there. I'm a little bit sore, you know, into Sunday football. But we're talking about the Carolina Panthers and Buffalo Bills. And is Josh Allen hurt or is he healthy? Is he in a boot? Is he not in a boot? He wasn't a boot on Monday. On Tuesday, he went to see Hamilton, not in a boot. So either the boot wasn't cool enough for date night or he's actually feeling a lot better. Something we need to pay attention to because Mitchie Biscuits, Mitch Trubisky, he's also getting some reps in practice. So they're just trying to limit Josh Allen here this week, rest up to make sure he's good to go for this weekend. If I had to guess, I think that's what it is. Going up against the Carolina Panthers, they're pretty solid against opposing quarterbacks, allowing only 15 and a half fantasy points per game, which is fifth fewest in the NFL. But we know if Josh Allen is healthy, if Josh Allen is playing, he's in your fantasy football lineup. The dude is like a walk-in 300-yard passing, 50-yard rushing TD machine out there. You know you want him in your fantasy lineup as long as he's healthy and playing. As for Cam Newton, not so much. Um, what is this, like a quarterback carousel in, in Carolina now? What the hell is going on? Is Matt Rule trying to be like a knockoff version of Sean Payton? Because if he is... It's not working, right? This is absolutely ridiculous. They're pulling Cam out around the goal line. They're utilizing P.J. Walker at time. P.J. Walker's throwing interceptions, and then he's getting benched. And then Cam's coming in, and he's throwing interceptions, and then he's getting benched. But yet they're paying Cam so much money, they feel like they have to continue to pay him. What the hell? Why did you pay this guy so much money to give him such a short leash? You knew before he signed that he couldn't throw deep down the field. Why the hell are you running routes deep down the field, Matt? Get it together. Utilize the skill set that he has. If it means that it's a boring vanilla offense to watch, cool. That would suck here for us NFL viewers. But if you can win ball games, Matt, utilize the skill set of the players you have on your roster. Whew. Okay. Rant over. Back to this matchup. I mean, do they go back to Sam Darnold? Is that an option here in Carolina? Do, are they just trying to save their jobs at this point as the coaching staff? I mean, they tried to throw Joe Brady under the bus and blame him, but it's obvious that he was not the, the problem. There is just so much risk here. There's that opportunity where Cam can get them into the red zone, and then they pull him for P.J. Walker. There's also that opportunity that P.J. Walker gets the bulk of the snaps, and they put Cam in around the goal line. You just have no idea, and in a, a matchup here going up against the Buffalo Bills, I don't know if I want to tempt fate. There's a lot of risk here. Cam could literally go out and score 30 points, or he could go out and score seven. There's like no other option there, right? It's going to be one or the other, and that type of risk leads me to sit him here this week. 
Now we got to Detroit for the Arizona Cardinals, Detroit Lions, and it was pretty bad-ish last week, I guess you could say, for Kyler Murray, which is crazy to say, since he had 444 total yards but no touchdowns, and people wanted the touchdowns. Now we're getting rumors and, and hearing reports that DeAndre Hopkins could miss the rest of the regular season. That is not ideal. We already know that James Conner is banged up. He got hurt towards the end of the ballgame this past week, but this also means we can see a whole lot more Kyler Murray on the ground and through the air. Maybe a lot more Rondell Moore, maybe more A.J. Green, which worries me because we've seen A.J. Green retire mid-route, and that was this season at one point. So that's a little bit worrisome, but we could see a whole lot more pressure on Kyler Murray, which is good, I guess, for fantasy football because it could give him more opportunities to put up points going up against Detroit. They allow over 18 fantasy points per game there to opposing quarterbacks. You don't ever sit Kyler Murray. As for Jared Goff, I can't. This guy's only scored over 18 fantasy points one time since week four. Now a matchup going up against Arizona who allows only 15 and a half fantasy points per game. Third fewest in the NFL, just not enough TDs. And I like me some TDs. No, honey, I said TDs, like touchdowns. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's not enough touchdowns in this offense to really go around. So Jared Goff is not somebody who I'm willing to to risk it with here in, in week 15. No TDs as in t- touchdowns. That, that's what I'm talking about. Never mind. All right, moving on down to Miami for the Jets and the Dolphins. And the Dolphins... Could allow 50 fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks, and I still wouldn't start Zach Wilson in this matchup. He only has two passing touchdowns since week four. Week four. This is week 15. He's only had two passing touchdowns. Are you kidding me? Now no Elijah Moore. Corey Davis is hurt. Yeah, no thanks. Not willing to risk it here with Zach Wilson. As for Tua, he's coming off the bye week. He's got no healthy running back, so you know he's going to have to do a lot of it himself through the air. He's going to have to throw the ball a lot which bodes well for Tua because he's been throwing the ball really well. Three straight games, completing over 73% of his passes, four straight with a quarterback rating over 100. And oh yeah, one of those games was against these exact same New York Jets. In that game, he went 27 of 33 for two touchdowns and one interception. The Jets allow over 19 fantasy points per game. And with the run game hurting, I'll start me some Tua here this week. Now we go up to New York for the Giants and Cowboys and Does anyone else find it odd how Dak Prescott only has one game with multiple touchdowns over the last month? I mean, the running game is banged up. We've seen less pass attempts and yards now in three straight games out of Dak Prescott, which is absolutely crazy because his wide receiving group is finally healthy with Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup. He should be out there slinging balls all over the place to these stud wide receivers. However, It's just not all coming together right now for the Dallas Cowboys offense, which is crazy since the running game is so banged up. Zeke has been hurt for weeks. We've been missing Tony Pollard here last week. Maybe we miss him again here this week. However, they did face off against this same New York Giants defense back in week five. Dak had 302 yards passing, three touchdowns, and one interception. Since then, the New York Giants are allowing right around 18 fantasy points per game with all the weapons around him and the running game continuing to be banged up. I don't think you can afford to sit Dak Prescott right now. The ceiling is too high. We've seen it too many times there in Dallas, and he's got so many weapons at his disposal. That guy could literally go out there and win you your matchup all by himself. For New York, this is another week of Mike Glennon. Now, don't get me wrong. Week 14, it wasn't that bad, but I'm not counting on a weekly rushing touchdown out of Mike Glennon in order to make him a viable fantasy football starter. He's yet to throw for over 200 yards through the air, and he's got too many weapons that are hurt in his offense to really want to count on on a weekly basis. It's still Mike Glennon. This is the fantasy football playoffs. He's going to be a sit. Over to Philadelphia now, though, for the Eagles and the Washington football team. And is Jalen Hurts back here this week? Well, we know Nick Sirianni is going to say there's a chance, but we also know that dude lies like, A lot. I don't believe anything Nick Sirianni says. And there's no for sure thing here as of yet. But what we do know is Gardner Menchu is in practice and he's getting some reps there under center. Don't forget that dude played pretty well before the bye week. Sure, it was against the Jets, but he went 20 for 25, 242 yards passing, two touchdowns and no interceptions and really got the passing game going there for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now going up against Washington, they allow 24 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. That's like the most in the NFL. I'll start whichever guy starts here for Philadelphia. If it's Jalen Hurts, we're going to start him. If it's Gardner Minshew, we're going to start them. Now I'm not going to start Gardner Minshew. Pay attention. I'm not going to start Gardner if Jalen Hurts starts. That should be obvious, but I got to make sure I say because somebody's going to be out there. Well, what do I do if Jalen starts? Do I still start Gardner? No, you don't. It's whichever guy starts here for the Philadelphia Eagles is the guy that I'm interested in here this week. For Taylor Heineke, though, and the Washington football team, I've said a lot of times, I'm a fan of the Heine. 
right? But with Terry McLaurin banged up, the running game just can't seem to get going here. As of late, there's some fumbling issues there. Plus, we know that Taylor Heineke himself dealing with a little bit of an elbow injury, which could limit his potential production. That's a problem, right? There's just as many touchdowns to turnovers for him over the last three games, and that's not what you want to see out of your starting quarterback. The rushing upside as well, where'd that go? It basically disappeared. He has 21 yards rushing over his last three games combined. At least that was something there for a few weeks to kind of help boost that floor a little bit, but it is completely gone. This is not a bad matchup for him whatsoever, but the risk is through the roof, and he's going to be a sit. Now we head over to Pittsburgh for the Steelers and the Tennessee Titans, and man, I just wish that Tanny could have some healthy weapons there in Tennessee throughout this year. He could have put up some big fantasy numbers. I mean, they're slowly starting to work Julio Jones back in. He could see more and more work here over the next few weeks, but... Is it enough to really give him that higher ceiling that we really want from Ryan Tannehill? I don't know if it is. He hasn't had multiple touchdowns in a game now since week eight and only one 300-yard passing game since week two. Now he's going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, who have around 18 fantasy points per game, but it's a lot easier to run on Pittsburgh than it is to throw on them at this point in time. Sure, he may have Julio Jones back, but I don't think it's enough to raise the floor that high to where I feel comfortable, given his recent lack of production, so he's going to remain a sit. As for Big Ben, he's had back-to-back games now with at least 21 fantasy points. Now, this same thing happened in back-to-back games in weeks 9 and 11. You're probably saying, what about week 10, Jake? It was their bye. So in those back-to-back games, he put up some big numbers. I kind of fell for it, and I got burned in week 12. Does that same thing happen here this week? Going up against Tennessee, they all run around 19 fantasy points per game. And Ben being at home makes me feel a little bit better. Is this kind of a redemption week for Chase Claypool? Does Ben kind of force the ball to him a little bit more to try to get rid of all that negative attention he's had here over the past week or so? We know that Deontay Johnson, he's going to suck up targets. Najee Harris can you know be utilizing the passing game out of the backfield. James Washington catching some big passes at times. Plenty of options here in this offense and don't forget about the mooth in the red zone honestly i could get burned for a second time this year but i'm gonna start big ben down to jacksonville now though for the jags and the texans and listen davis mills had himself a pretty good week 14 i mean he's thrown for over 300 yards in his last two starts but i just can't not in the fantasy playoffs davis mills you need some major cojones to start that dude here this week, especially being that Jacksonville isn't half bad against opposing quarterbacks, allowing right around 17 and a half fantasy points per game, eighth fewest in the NFL, and they haven't allowed a 300 yard passer since week six. Like I said, it's still Davis Mills, and I'm going to have to sit him. For Jacksonville, no, there's no way I'm starting anybody in Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence has one touchdown since Halloween. It's almost Christmas. Only one touchdown? I mean, that's facts right there. That's not me blowing something out of proportion. That's facts. Jacksonville is in shambles. Now, ex-kickers are being reported that they they got kicked by Urban Meyer. What the hell is going on in Jacksonville? Total, total cluster. And honestly, I want nothing to do with it. I mean, Urban Meyer, need I say more? Out to Denver now for the Broncos and Bengals. And I guess Joy B last week just said, F this pinky finger. I don't need this damn thing. I'm going to go out there and still throw bombs. And that's exactly what he did this past week. But this is a little bit tougher matchup for him here this week, going up against the Denver Broncos, who will only allow right around 16 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. Can you can you really afford to sit Joe Burrow, though? I mean, the upside is top 10 every single week. Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, just too much firepower and too high of a ceiling. We've seen it multiple times throughout the year. Sure, there's been games here in recent weeks where he kind of underperformed. But with the amount of talent around him in a matchup like this, I can definitely see him going out there and giving you that safe floor, that 18 to 20 points. It may not be a 30-point week going up against Denver, but the floor, still pretty safe with all those weapons. He's going to remain a start. As for Teddy B here in the Denver Broncos, I just can't, right? I mean, the passing game is not working in Denver as of right now. The running game is just so effective with Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. So why are they going to force things in the passing game? 
Denver knows they can't keep pace with scoring when it comes to a matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals. How do they limit the amount of offensive plays that Cincinnati runs, they control time of possession, they run the football, they run it well. And that's exactly what Denver's going to do here this week, limiting the potential upside of Teddy B, which means he's going to be a sit for me here in week 15. Out to the Bay now for the 49ers and Falcons, and Jimmy G continues to do his best Kirk Cousins impersonation, right? Not flashy, but consistent. And that is exactly what we want here in the fantasy playoffs. He's had two touchdowns through the air now in five out of the last six games he's played with George Kittle and Debo Samuel in the mix. His floor is super safe each and every week. And now a matchup going up against Atlanta. They all run around 19 fantasy points per game or so, ninth most in the NFL. Plus, we're starting to see a little bit of a rushing upside from Jimmy G here over the last few weeks. He's going to remain a start for Atlanta. I just can't roll the dice with Matty Ice. Roll the dice with Matty Ice. Can't do it. Right now in the fantasy playoffs, this guy only has two touchdowns over his last five games and no 300-yard passing games since week nine. The only weapon he really has that's consistently being utilized through the air is Cordero Patterson. Don't get me wrong. I like Cordero Patterson, but that one guy alone can't make the floor safe enough for Matt Ryan to be a weekly start. So once again, Matty Ice in the sit column. Down to L.A., we go for the Rams and the Seahawks, and kind of a no-brainer here, right? You got Matthew Stafford, who's absolutely cooking. He's got three passing touchdowns now in three straight ball games. He almost threw for 400 yards against the Seattle defense the last time they met here earlier in the season. Now, he may be without Odell Beckham here, who was placed on COVID IR, but with the way that Van Jefferson and Cooper Cup are playing right now, that is more than enough for this guy to go out there and absolutely cook once again. He's going to remain a start. As for Russ, Seems to kind of, you know, be back on track here. Second half of the season, three straight games now with two touchdowns through the air. And he's really yet to utilize DK Metcalf. The ceiling could still be higher. The Rams allow right around 18 fantasy points per game. And this is the matchup in which Russ got hurt earlier in the season with his finger. So maybe a little bit of payback coming. I'm going to go ahead and start me some Russell Wilson here once again this week. Out to Baltimore now for the Ravens and the Packers. And when you look at this matchup and the opposing quarterbacks, the word health doesn't exactly come to mind. Here, you got Aaron Rodgers, who's dealing with a toe injury, which is being reported as being worse now than it was a few weeks ago. Couldn't really tell, right? The guy went out and threw for 341 yards, four touchdowns, and no interceptions this past week against the Chicago Bears. He's back to throwing bombs down the field, which we love to see. He's got 10 touchdowns over his last three games combined. It's simple. If Aaron Rodgers is playing out there on Sunday, he's in your fantasy football lineup. For Baltimore, should we be worried about Lamar Jackson? I mean, he's classified as day-to-day with an ankle sprain, but they also just added Josh Johnson to the roster, which is a little interesting to me. Now, honestly, if Lamar Jackson is out there on the field dealing with an ankle injury, how limited is he going to be in the running game? Because that running game is what really makes his floor safe. He's not known for being a huge passer, a huge fantasy passer, fantasy production. He's not known for huge fantasy production in the passing game. See, sometimes you just got to slow down and it comes to you. But if he's not out there running the ball on the ground, you could see a limited ceiling. Do you sit Lamar Jackson? I mean, it's super risky to start him if he does play. Honestly, we're going to watch practice reports here all throughout the week and we'll update you by Friday. But if this guy is 100% healthy heading into the weekend, obviously you start Lamar Jackson. Until we get more information, he's going to be classified as a start. If he does not go... We're looking at Tyler Huntley, and even though the guy didn't play half bad the last time he filled in for Lamar Jackson, we're not going to risk that start during the fantasy playoffs going up against the Green Bay defense, which is sixth best in the NFL against opposing quarterbacks. Kind of just need to wait and see here and cross your fingers if you own Lamar Jackson. On a Sunday football now, the Saints and the Bucks, and sure, we've seen Tom Brady struggle to beat the Saints, but we don't see him struggle to throw the ball against them. They faced off in Week 8, and Tom Brady had 375 yards, passing four touchdowns and two interceptions. He's currently quarterback two overall in the season, and in this matchup against New Orleans, who's allowing over 21 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks, you know you're going to start Tom Brady. Now, for the Saints and Taysom Hill, the finger is okay-ish, but we really saw them utilize a different style of game plan this past week to really build around the strengths of what they had with Taysom Hill. They knew he was going to be limited in the passing game because of that finger, and they found a way to make it work. They adapted and overcame. Take notes, Matt Rule, because this is what you're supposed to be doing with Cam Newton, and you're not because you're sucking right now. Anyway, 
rant over once again. Now, we know that Taysom Hill needs to continue to run the ball on the ground to give us that safe floor, but that's what this guy is known for. And plus, once they get around the goal line, it's not you know out of the question for him to call his own number there. He's going to be a start for me this week, but he's going to be a little bit lower down the rankings. Tampa Bay is easier to throw on than they are to run on, and that could limit this upside here slightly. That's why I'm going to drop him down just a few spots in my rankings here towards the end of the week. Which only leaves us Monday Night Football, the Minnesota Vikings, and Chicago Bears, and back to good old faithful Kirk Cousins, who's had at least two passing touchdowns now in six straight ball games. He may not have Adam Thielen once again this week, but K.J. Osborne, a super solid wide receiver, too, in this offense, going against Chicago. They allow over 19 fantasy points per game, fourth most in the NFL. Plus, we know that Dalvin Cook in that running game really helps open up the passing game for Kirk Cousins. He's going to be a start. As for Chicago and Justin Fields, I am tempted here this week. I love the game plan. I love the scheme they drew up just this past week for Justin Fields. The Vikings allow over 19 fantasy points per game themselves, and this rushing upside that we're seeing from Justin Fields each and every week really helps raise that floor, like we've talked about here with a few other quarterbacks in this episode. Now, the Vikings, they can be run on. They can be run on a lot, and that could really benefit Justin Fields here this week. He's not somebody who we can count on going out there and throwing for 275 or two or three touchdowns a week. But if we can go out there and get him to throw right around 200, one or two touchdowns through the air, maybe one touchdown passing, one touchdown rushing, and we add in 70 rushing yards, you're going to be you know happy with that start here in fantasy football. I love the matchup. I love what I saw last week. I'm going to take a little bit of a risk here. I'll start Justin Fields, but he's not going to be super highly ranked here this week. All right, those are my starts and sits for the quarterback position here this week. Hopefully I was able to help clarify a few things there for your fantasy rosters heading into the fantasy playoffs. And hopefully we've helped a lot of people here this week. We're getting a lot of comments on a lot of videos saying, hey, there's a lot of people fighting for some championships here in the coming up weeks. And we love to see those comments. So make sure you leave them down below. We want to be sure to celebrate with you. You guys are doing a great job out there and we greatly appreciate the support. Do me a favor, hit that like button and consider subscribing if you have not already. We would greatly uh, appreciate that support and then hang out with us all year. Year long. This is the time of year where people start to like unsubscribe to things because the football season is almost over. We aren't going nowhere. Even when the season is over, we still make content all year long that you do not want to miss. So make sure you stick around for that. But hopefully you guys are having a great week. Hopefully you're having a great day here today and we'll talk to you later.